Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me on this Friday, May 20th, here in the Locker Room. I'm Alan Locker. Actress Esther Tablanche is here today to look back at her time playing Jillian Andrese Lavery on All My Children. Esther was born and raised in South Africa and was crowned Miss Teen South Africa in 1991. She started working as an actress in South Africa, but wanted to further her career here in the United States. She moved to the U.S. in 1995 and two years later landed her role on All My Children. Some of her other credits include Spin City and hosting the South African youth program, KTV. It is my pleasure to welcome on this Friday afternoon, Esther Tablanche to the locker room. Thank you so much, Alan. It's You're wonderful, so, to, <laughs> it's wonderful yeah. to be here with you. You're so, so welcome. Thanks for spending some time. I'm excited to uh, chat with you. You were, you were born in Rustenburg, Northwest province. Do I have that right in South yes, Africa? Yes, you do. Rustenburg. Ta tell us about Rustenburg. You know, it's a beautiful little, well, now it's bigger, but it was a very small little town, not even on the map. Um, very, really small, like one hospital. Um, few traffic lights, a um, couple schools, and uh, just a, a, such a beautiful little, I want to almost say village, but a little bigger than a village, but it was a wonderful place to grow up. And now it, it's bigger now, it's actually on the map. And um, yeah, it's grown into a bigger city now. Was it not on the map when you were a little girl? No, no, it was actually not listed even on the map. It was that wow. small. Yeah. Wow. That's a, and so what was your childhood like there? Well, my, my, my childhood was really amazing because my father had a game farm and we would spend time at, uh, in Rustenburg, which was kind of like the city for us. And at the game farm, which was completely a city. I mean, a, a village um, that that was out in the middle of nowhere. Um, it was right on the border of Botswana and it was very rural, no electricity. The stove you had to you had to make with wood. And if you wanted to use hot water, you you had to um, you had to make a fire. And it was called a donkey. You had to make a fire and, and it would boil the water so you could take a hot shower or a hot bath. So, and, and, and also, you, yeah, it was a whole different type of life. And um, I also had the privilege of just spending a lot of time with animals and growing up with wild animals. We had a game farm. So I feel I yeah. had such a privileged childhood that's amazing you just reminded me uh about five or six years ago we went on a safari in tanzania and oh. at one at one of the camps they had to put the hot water in you know pour it in the thing like it wasn't just like a shower with hot water they had to boil it and yeah yes was, yes that that's exactly how it how it was that's how i grew up Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> do you do you have a favorite animal? Oh, I love all animals, but I have a really um, soft, special spot for horses. Nice. And I do you ride? Yes, I do. Do you still? Yeah, ride? I had at one point I had 13 horses. Wow. Yes, just because I, I was riding professionally. So I had my show horse. And then on the farm, I had horses. And, you know, they started to have babies. And, and it just ended up being 13 horses altogether. That's incredible, really. Yeah. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. wow. I, I mentioned in the opening about you winning... Uh, Miss Teen South Africa in 1991. How did you get involved in pageants? I have no idea. <laughs> 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 um, 
I get it was all really because I was just trying to be an actress. I wanted to get into acting. Okay, yeah, you got to you got to do something. Who, what, um, who or what influenced you on becoming an actress? Was there an actress you loved, or you know, where did that love of of acting come from? I remember I would watch movies, and then I got so intrigued by the scenes. I remember watching Supergirl. And then there was this one scene where she said, I, and I'm, I, I, I can't really remember what she said, but I would afterwards go and say that scene over and over. Like I am Supergirl and I will save the world and you're safe with me. And I would do it over and over. And I felt like I'm Supergirl and I'm going to save this world. And I started doing it with all the movies. And I'm like, wow, I like this. I, I want to be an actress. Yeah, and I just, that's how it kind of happened. I never really thought about anything else. It was just since I was little, since I was like three, I was always telling people, go sit down. I'm going to entertain you. I'm going to, I don't know, put... Uh, but on a I show. Call but on... Act like I'm going to have a concert for you. So I had no idea what I was really doing, but I was just saying, buy tickets. I, I was always <laughs> making, uh, taking a paper and then putting a price on it and cutting it and say 50 cents, buy, buy 50 cents for me. And uh, at three o'clock, you have to come and then I'm, I'm going to have a concert for you. Sometimes I would even walk up the whole street and say, buy tickets, come down. At this house at three o'clock, I'm going to have a concert for you. <laughs> I hey. said, that's how it started, I suppose. I, I love it. <laughs> did, did you study acting back home? I was going to study. Uh, I, I was going to the university. And then right before that, I got this part on... Um, Egoli, which is the mm -hmm. South African TV show. And I actually started the day I wrote my, um, my, my last subject, like my last final, my last day of my finals, went back home, got my stuff and moved. And the next morning I started my rehearsals on that TV show. So they were, they were, they were allowing me the time. They gave me extra three weeks to finish up my exams, and um, and and then I had to move to Johannesburg, which was the big city. And, and what was that like getting that part? Oh my goodness, it was unbelievable. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was unbelievable. I I was so thrilled i could not even believe it it was really a dream come true because it was the first daytime show ever done in south africa ever in history so it was um a got a lot of thing, attention actually. yeah got a lot yes, of attention ever done in 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 our country and it had a lot it, it had all the big act names in it and um, I could not even believe what was happening to me. So it was it. Um, incredible. I love that. And, and what um, was your favorite part of that experience? Um, there's so many wonderful parts about that it's i think just people were so kind to me it was my first time working in the industry with all these professional people everybody was really nice to me and uh I had no experience working in front of a camera, except, you know, for my, my hosting. Um, but but as far as acting, none. 
Um, so everything was new and everything was just, it, everything was a great experience really, because you know, it's when, great. You know when, when you do something for the first time and almost everything is amazing, like kind that's, of nerve wracking, but amazing. It, that's it's special. kind of like that. So it's hard to say that was the yeah. best thing or that was the best thing. Just and everything was and, great. And you're lucky to have such a great experience on your first project. Oh, I am beyond lucky. I'm, <laughs> it's, it's incredible. It's, yeah. I, I am so blessed. So, so blessed. T talk about your decision to move to the United States. What, you know, was it a, a, a long process? Was it hard to leave your family behind? It was the most difficult thing I've ever done. Um, Scary? Yes. I, it was just something I always knew I wanted to, to do. It wasn't a decision I like one day made. It just was always a calling for me. Like it, it was, it, so I always knew I was going to do that. Um, I couldn't explain why. I, I, it, it was just, okay, that's, that's what you're going to do. You have to do that. It was just that voice. Mm. And I knew I had to follow that. And it's that certain voice that if you, you know, you can't ignore it. Mm. I mean, you can, but certain voices I, I cannot ignore. And then, so I just had to go. But for two weeks before I, I left, I could not stop crying. It, it was horrible. Even on the plane from um, Rome, I cried all the way, all the way. <laughs> um, and and you, were by I, your, I you were by yourself? Yeah. And I, wow. I could not stop crying. I was writing in my journal, what am I doing? I'm just going to go right back. As soon as I land, I'm going to go right back. It was so difficult. It was really hard. And then even when I got out of the plane and I walked out and I looked at this city, I thought, you're nuts. What were you thinking? And I literally, I turned around and I took my suitcases and I thought, I'm just going to go back. And then I thought, okay, just stay for a week. And I, I just did it like day by day by day. Did, did you have any leads or an agent when you arrived? Yes, I had a manager. I did a trip a, about a year before or a few, like nine months earlier, where I came out and I tried, I tried to make some connections. And I did find a manager and I entered the green card lottery. And then I went back to South Africa and I won the green card lottery. And um, that must I, have been very, you know, <laughs> having that idea to come to the United States, winning the, the lottery must have been very exciting. Yes, it was <laughs> incredible because when I came the year before, I went to an attorney. So, you know, to try and get a green card for paperwork and stuff. And he said, we will be able to get you one on um, special for this special abilities or whatever um, visa for for achievements in South Africa. But it's going to cost about five thousand dollars. So Ooh. back then in the day. It was so much money, which I did not have at that point, like in, in the rent to the dollar. But he said, but you can, you know, you can try entering, you can try to enter the lottery as well. You, you may win it. I mean, your chances are one in a million, but you, you can just try to enter it. I said, yeah, enter. I'll win it. <laughs> and um, yeah, then I won it. 
So I was so lucky. That is amazing. How many languages do you speak? Um, no, those 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 are um, not correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> <I think>. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I I, I, I speak um, Afrikaans fluently. That's my um, my first native, language, first language, my native yeah. tongue. Yes, so yeah. I speak Afrikaans, and then I speak English, and uh, I try to speak a little bit of Spanish and German and. You know, I try to, I try to dabble a little bit in a lot of languages, just to the basics. That's incredible. That's incredible. Well, the fans are very excited you're here. Thank you. <laughs> Were you living in Los Angeles uh, when the role on All My Children came up? Yes, I was living in Los Angeles. Yes. And, and tell us what you remember about the audition for Jillian. Well, I had to fly to New York and... Um, was that your first time to New York? It was my first time to New York. And I had just settled in in Los Angeles, just got comfortable here and just made friends and... <laughs> started to get comfortable here and then I thought really do I really want to move again like this is a lot and this is a big city and it just felt like I wasn't sure if I could do it and I started the um the screen test it oh, but wait, screen. before that, that was actually the audition part. I, I did the audition. Um, it went great. But then they, they said to my, my agents, oh, she was great, but she's too young for the part. It was for a doctor. We really like her, but we're going to write her a part. Um, and I thought, no, that's, I, I don't think that will happen. But, you know, that's, that's nice. And then, sure enough, um, like three you, you, weeks you or thought so, they were you thought they were you know sort of just, just saying something nice. Yes, to... <laughs> I really did. I I thought no, that that's not. I really that didn't sound right to me. I thought no, <laughs> but they said no, no. They they really liked you, but they they're gonna write something for you. And uh, so next thing. A couple of weeks later, I get a call saying, okay, you, they want to fly you to New York. They want to screen test you. And my manager said, I'm picking you up in two days, like at five in the morning. Like, I'll take you to the airport. I'm like, holy moly, really? Okay. And so I went. But so as I, I'm, I'm now, now we're on set. Now we're doing the screen test. And what, who was the screen test with? Was it Ryan? Danny uh, Cosgrove. Ah, oh, my Danny. Yes. I love Danny. Yes. yes. I worked with Danny on Guiding Light. Is he? Oh, is, you did. Is he not the funniest man you have ever met in your life? Yeah, he is so funny. Such so a dry funny. sense of humor. <laughs> so funny. So funny. Oh, so I, tell me about the screen test with Danny. Um, I, I, um, I just started and then I completely messed it up. I was like, I don't know if I can live and I don't know if I can move to New York now. I just, um, I'm, I'm happy in, in LA. I don't know if I can immigrate or not immigrate, but make this big move again. <sighs> so I messed it up. And then I thought, you know what? You can do this. Like if you get the part, you'll move, you'll be fine. You'll adjust, you'll just do it all over again. So just go for it. Like just get this part. Like just do it and get the part and like just, you know, just, just do it. And I said, sorry, I'm, can I please go again? Like, and then I went again. 
and it went great. And then I did get the part. But it's amazing how sometimes your your head just wants to get in the way. And sometimes you just have to step out of it yeah, and say, true. no. The, the voices up here can really, yes. you know. And yeah. that was a an actual thing where I, I really think I did that on purpose. And I had to say to myself, no. It's okay if I get it. I'll I'll deal with the consequences. The consequences meaning I'm getting this job, which means I'll have to move again, start all over again, start a whole new life again. It's hard, but I'll 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 do it. And just in in like in a split second, all all those big decisions in in a matter of two seconds having that conversation with you and then just saying okay can I go again um, I'm ready I'll do it and then I did it and um, that was my audition or my screen test were, uh, were you excited when they called and said you got it I was very excited yes <laughs> I was extremely excited and and did you end up falling in love with New York City Oh, I love New York City. I absolutely loved it. I think um, New York City is a place, for me, it was perfect. I spent five years there and it was the perfect amount of time for me. I, I, because I come from basically a, a farm type of life, um, I don't think I could permanently live um, in in New York. It's too much of a concrete jungle. Mm -hmm. But just living there and having that incredible privilege to to live there and work there was, it, I, I mean, it's it's incredible and it's it's such a privilege. And uh, who wouldn't want to work in New York City? Manhattan. So uh, I'm, I agree. <laughs> I'm incredibly blessed to have lived there. Um, yes. And experience the cold and those icy winds. And, uh, you know, it's what a beautiful experience. Do you remember your first day on set? I do. Were you nervous? Oh, yes, I was <laughs> wearing those red shoes. Yes, I totally remember my first day. I who, who overslept. You, uh... I overslept. Oh. And I oh, never, no. but I was so, oh, my goodness. I couldn't <laughs> sleep the night before because I was so excited and I was, I was so nervous. And I, I, I couldn't fall asleep. And then... I overslept and I, when I woke up, I got ready and to the studio in 10 minutes. <laughs> like I, um, you're in New York, right? Uh huh. From the Radisson Hotel to ABC studios, like Columbus, Columbus. Yeah. Um, I literally ran, like <laughs> there was not even time for a cab. I ran. <laughs> <laughs> I just jumped out of bed, grabbed my bag, and ran. I got there in 10 minutes, and I was on time. It was, That's great. I, I, I'll never forget my first day on set. I made it who on were you, time. Who were you working with? Um, it was Danny. Nice. Danny. His car broke down. No, my car broke down. And I was hitchhiking with red shoes and they panned the camera up my shoes, up my legs. And I was wearing this short skirt and he stopped to help me fix my car. I love it. And there, there, there Jillian began. One of the fans was asking, uh, music lover, asked, do you uh, have a favorite Jillianism? 
<laughs> hmm. Who is that music lover? It's a it's a fan. He's watching. Uh, okay. Um. <laughs> I don't know his real name or her real name. Oh. They're asking a favorite Jillianism. Hmm. And they were asking, did you know when you started that you would be related to Dimitri? Yes, I did. You did. I did. Nice. Julian Andrashi. Yes, I did. I, I knew I was going to be, yeah. Um, talk about the late Michael Nader and the late David Canary. Oh, uh, David Canary was just a beautiful uh, person, very kind. Um, very gentle, very caring, really a gentleman. Have Have you met him? Um, I, I don't know if I. I might have met him. It's been okay. a long time. He's, I was a he's, I was a page. Uh, I don't know if you know what that is. It's like an usher. I was an usher at ABC oh, uh, okay. at the start of my career when I was in college, and so oh, I gosh. had to give I had to give tours at all, at all my children. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was wonderful, always kind, always asking how you are, like a, a little reserved, but a, a really nice man. Um, and talent for days. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's just, he's brilliant. He yeah. was just really great. And then Michael. <laughs> uh, he's, mm -hmm. he's wonderful. I think uh, I, I feel a sadness for Michael. He's, he, because I think he's a, he's a bit of a tortured soul. You know, he's been through a lot. Um, I uh, he's um, I loved working with him. I loved working with him. He's he's a phenomenal actor. Um, I I always liked him. I loved Michael. I think he 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 was great. I had you, a empathy for him a lot. Hmm. You, really, you really. A lot, you worked with a lot of great people there. I really did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talk about, uh, did you know you, when you started that you'd be paired with Cameron? No, not at all. I, no. I went to South Africa and I came back and um, I, I read my script that, oh, I'm going to be meeting this guy. I literally read it in the script and I, I wondered, oh, I wonder who's this guy. Um, and that was the first I, I knew. I had no idea. No, I, I had no idea. <laughs> And what was it like to work opposite him? In the beginning, it was not, it was a little difficult for me. Um, it, it took time for us, I think, to, to get into a groove. It- To click? Yeah. Okay. It didn't happen, I think, in, well, I know, I know it didn't happen instantly. It took, it took a while. Funnily enough, um, people think, oh, they, they, they were this, this great couple on screen, but we weren't. It, not at all. Um, that, that was not the case. Uh, it took time and, um, 
over time it, it grew, it developed and it got better and it became more organic and it, we just, uh, I guess got more comfortable with each other and it got easier and I, I just got, yeah, got, then it got wonderful. Mm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know, not everything works from the minute you start, you know, it some, some things take work to work. <laughs> yeah, that you is, know, that is true. A, yeah, not, most great things take work. Absolutely. Put, put in the effort and the outcome is fantastic. Yes. Absolutely. What, what brought about your decision to exit, to leave all my children? At the time, they, when my contract was up, they wanted to offer a four-year contract. And yeah, they were only doing long, you know, long contracts. And my husband at the time had to come back to Los Angeles for work, move here. And... I, uh, it was just, what do I do? Sign for four years, stay there, or do I come here with him? So it was, it was just, it was a very, very, very difficult decision. Really and, uh, difficult decision. And. Was it always the decision for them to kill Jillian off? No, it coincided with me leaving. Right. Going to Los Angeles. Carolyn uh, just said the way they killed Jillian was brutal. Oh, yeah. Do you, what, what was, you know, your last day of filming like? It was really sad. It was really, really sad. Um, I remember when we were shooting the, um, the scenes where I got shot, I was crying when I was dead. (laughs) And we had to do it again and again because the tear (laughs) went down my eye. And they'd be like, Kelly, and don't cry. I'm like, I'm trying to. <laughs> because I'm crying because Cameron is sobbing here next to me. He's literally really cry, sobbing. He's crying so much that I'm crying. I'm like, don't cry so much because I'm crying for you. So it, it was really hard to play dead. <laughs> I, I bet. Do you, do, you, do you know the TV show This Is Us? No. It just had a, a an episode this week, and I was reading about the actress who's lying in her hospital or sort of on her deathbed, and she. It was very hard for her not to cry, like you were trying not to cry when Cameron was crying, like she's supposed um, to be like you know in a coma, but people are crying next to her, and oh. so just like you said, Cameron's crying, and you're trying not to cry. Oh my goodness! See, I don't. It's something about their emotions to, yes. to affecting. Yeah, <laughs> so strange. Do, what are some of your favorite storylines during your time there? I really loved the um, aphasia storyline where I was in a car accident and I couldn't speak, and. It, I thought, wow, this is going to be great for three weeks. I'm not going to have any lines to learn. (laughs) Easy, easy work. (laughs) I was so wrong because (laughs) here you have to portray all these emotions and I'm going through having to communicate. Like we were going through Colby. She the child like is he the father and i know only i know the truth and i have to communicate with my eyes but and i can't write and it 
yeah, it was incredible how challenging that was, but how uh, just wonderful that was. It was really great, and and you, I don't know if you know, but like in the in the magazines, how they pick the performer of the week. Mm-hmm. During the aphasia thing. I got that performer of the week thing every week with a aphasia storyline. Wow. And I was so, I remember I thought, this is amazing. Wow. With no words. I, I, <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah. So that, that's amazing. You know what? Um, the, the soap you did in South Africa and all my children Mm-hmm. I assume there was a, a a large difference of how we did things here in the United States and how they did things in South Africa. Were you surprised when you got to all my children and saw the amount of work you had to do? Uh, you know, uh, our executive producer and creator of Igoli actually spent many months uh, in America studying uh American soaps um, like Loving and uh, well, all the soaps that were going at the time then. And he he basically built it like he's the 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 whole plan on what was done here. So it was very similar. So. Yeah, it was very similar, except uh, All My Children was an hour show and The Show in South Africa was only 30 minutes. So the work was double uh, (laughs) per day. So, yes, the workload was way more intense. (laughs) Plus, it was in English for me. In South Africa, I was working in Afrikaans. So now suddenly I had to work in English and um, that was really difficult for me. Like that for the first time I had to. Talk about that. Was it, you know, like did, what did you have to, you know, you know, what was your process to make sure that you could, you know, uh, perform in a second language? I, I could speak it. I could understand it. I had no problem with that. But memorizing it and uh, remembering it and speaking it and putting it all together and and making it all work at the same time with the emotions, with all of it at once together was hard for me, really hard. And then... Um, Sometimes if you can't think of a word and you want to just say, you know, that word like and and you just want to use the Afrikaans word, but nobody on set can understand you, (laughs) then you can get frustrated because nobody understands you. There's no one that can understand you like nobody. And. So that sometimes is challenging. Um that was actually very challenging. And then also my accent was a lot thicker. So people had trouble understanding me a lot of times. So it was just, it was, it was a little, little difficult for me. Yeah. You had to work a little extra harder than, than a little extra harder. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you really did. Um, are there similarities between you and Jillian? Yes, there's always similarities in any character with with every everyone you play. You have to find similarities, otherwise you you got it. You got it. You got to find some. Yeah. What was it lo- like coming back as a ghost? Oh, that was fun. I really enjoyed that. That was really fun. Yeah, nice I really to see liked all your- that. Nice to see all your friends, I'm sure. (laughs) Yes, wonderful. (laughs) I loved it. (laughs) (laughs) 
What prompted you to leave New York? I mean, I know you left the show, but you moved because of your husband, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right after the World Trade Centers, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And are, are you like Los Angeles? I do. I do. It's, you know, the weather is nice. Um more of a suburban vibe yeah i like los angeles do you ever think you'd move back to south africa maybe it's a beautiful country it's in my blood i Mm -hmm. love south africa i miss my family tremendously you never know i would love to uh, it it's on my high on my list you know, having really? done a having done a safari in Tanzania, I would love to go explore South Africa as well. Oh, you should. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Did you watch um any American soap operas? You know, I I watched a little bit of Loving, uh, a little bit of this, but and that Santa Barbara. I wasn't a big I didn't watch a lot of television. I still don't. Wow. I I don't watch a lot of television. Funnily enough. <laughs> yeah, there, there's many actors who do not. Did you did you watch yourself? Uh Oh boy, that's very hard for me to do. I I mean if I was at work and uh, and the monitors were on and I'm up and I, yeah, then I had to see myself. I would see myself or if I'm in the makeup room and the show was on and yeah, it, it was difficult for me to, it's difficult for me to watch myself. I did, I, I did, I did see myself. Yes. But I didn't uh, specifically watch myself all the time. No. <laughs> Uh-uh. Ma- ma- many actors I've spoken to feel the same way. Some do watch, but many, many do not. Um, yeah. Justin was asking, would you consider coming on uh, the, you've heard that they're talking about doing a Pine Valley spinoff? Yes. Would you consider playing an, a new character on there? Oh, absolutely. I think they can even bring Jillian back. Yeah. It, in, in a soap opera, they can bring anybody back. That is, that is absolutely correct. I mean, there's correct. no proof. <laughs> there's no proof. We didn't see them bury the body. No. <laughs> what, <laughs> what prompted your decision to step away from acting for a little while? Um... I just wanted to focus a little bit on some healing work and some other things. Mm -hmm. But I think I would love to get back into it now. Yeah. That's that's great. I think the fans would love that. How did you uh, keep busy during the pandemic? I was just going to say, during the pandemic, I decided to turn off my TV. For two years, I did not watch TV. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I would do. <laughs> I, uh, I came back from South Africa. I had to fly back right before they started to close the borders. Mm-hmm. And I came back. And within a week, I almost had a nervous breakdown, like a panic attack uh, thinking I have nobody here my family's not here I'm all alone like I how am I gonna do this like I don't know how I'm gonna do this and watching the news it's it just makes it worse like you really feel like there's no hope and I thought holy moly I I don't know how I'm gonna get through this and I thought there's only one way I'm going to get through this is just by tuning out. Like I cannot 
no, absolutely no COVID for me. No, none of this. Like I, I, I know it's there, but I got to keep my life going or, 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 you know, I cannot get scared by this. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 you know, Esther, I started this show two weeks after the pandemic started, sort of as a way, first of all, to cheer people up, but also Good as a way for, for me. You, you see, a, as a way to also because I was glued to the TV watching the news for those, you know, when it first started. So it was a great way to, you know, take my mind off of the the news because you're right. It it was it was a lot when it first hit yeah. it was to, to, to see it day in and day out for all of us, for everybody around the world. Yes. It was, it was very difficult to, to have that. Yeah. 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 And, and then, and then people would talk to me and be like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> They're like, why are you so happy? Like the world is about the world is, <laughs> you know, going falling under, apart like, yeah. the, the whole world is dying and you're so great like how are you you're so i'm sorry, I'm sorry. you're like always great <laughs> well, be, because like i'm not watching the news like yeah. don't you i don't you get it like i don't <laughs> so i had a way of cheering everybody up because i wasn't consumed by this so i for me it yeah. worked and we everybody had to do what worked for them. That's for sure. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Who are some of your acting role models? I love Angelina Jolie. Mm. I love uh, Neil Sandilands, a great actor. Um. Uh, yeah, those are some I like. Do you have a dream project you would like to do? Yeah, I do. What is it? Hmm. Let's just say You know, my TV just turned on by itself. Um, That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe I'm not going to say it. Okay. Well, say yeah. it out loud when we're done. Um, you know, so you put it out into the universe. Yes. Make it happen. Um, what's next for you? Um, working on a uh, foundation, um, a cancer foundation. Um, it's already in South Africa and we're bringing it to America. And um, it's a nonprofit foundation to help people with cancer. So we're working on that. What prompted that decision? And, and is it cancer in general or a particular? Form of cancer, cancer in general. Okay. Um, my mom passed away of um, cancer, of mine, brain cancer. So mine, it's, mine from lung cancer. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So I just, when I went through that, I just thought I will do anything I can to somehow uh, you know be able to help this cancer thing mm -hmm. and it needs to go away yeah yeah it really I think it can I think it can it it just needs it it it, it it can so I, I i i really felt that somehow i wanted to be a part of finding an answer for that 
it was way too painful for me with my mom. I mean, you know. I, I, I do know. And you, you, you don't know this young woman, but a young woman lost her battle. Um, and as the world turns actress named Marnie Schulenberg, 37 years old. Oh my God. Um, and I don't want to say lost her battle because her husband doesn't even want to say lost because Marnie, she passed away on Tuesday um, oh. and, and she fought harder than probably anybody I have ever seen tackle what life threw at her. And, um, you know, we should all pray for her husband and her little girl. But yeah, cancer is taking way too many people. You know, you and I speak from experience. So, you know, it, it is incredibly painful it's incredibly painful for your mother, my mother, and the families to go through. Yeah. You know, yeah. if we can, if we can prevent people from having to, to have the pain that you and I lived through, that would be a blessing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, well, when, when, when you launch the foundation, let's try and do something. I'd love to help. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. It's a it's a pleasure to speak with you, Esther. Oh. Thank you so much for spending the time with me. Thank you, Alan. Thank you so much for having me. I'm you I'm are honored. so you are so welcome. The, the fans you. love seeing you. Thank you. Be Have well. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you to Esther for stopping by today. Uh, please join me on Tuesday afternoon, May twenty fourth, when one day at a times. Glenn Scarpelli joins me live. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have yet to do so. Turn on notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. And please hug your loved ones, stay safe, and be kind to everyone. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye. <laughs>